在散。Little nudge, don't do that. Don't go there. Don't talk、mm-hmm. to that person. And I'd be like, whatever, be quiet. And I just、mm-hmm. go and do it. And then I get myself into trouble. But once I started listening to that voice again, it's it was leading me towards the light, towards where I was supposed to go. I was listening to the intuition, you know, those feelings, those gut vibes, the universe,、yes. whatever it is that you want to call it. Yes. And then it got me to where I'm at. This is all because I've been led here because I was listening to the voice. And but for a long time though, I ignored it because I was like, whatever. Because you know why? It's a, a lot of the times it's easier to be mad, easier、mm-hmm. to be sad, easier to be、yes. to wallow in your sorrows than to do the hard work to heal and to move forward in your life. And that was me、mm-hmm. for a long time. And it's it is hard to you know to to heal. And I always、yes. explain it in the sense that it's like it's like a wound, you know. Right. You have a wound that's infected,、mm-hmm. and you know we can put a bandaid on it, pretend like it's not there. But guess what? <laughs> Under that bandaid, it's still getting more infected and nasty.、Mm-hmm. So Ooh, when we、yes. choose to heal, it's like cleaning the wound, and it's gonna hurt. It's gonna sting every time、mm-hmm. you clean it. That's how healing is. But then guess what? Then it starts to heal, and then it starts to scab up. But guess what? Then it starts to get uncomfortable and itchy again. Uncomfortable again, you know. Even you think you're, oh, I, I thought it was all healed, but now it's bothering me again. But that's exactly how the healing journey is. There's gonna、mm-hmm. be things that bother you, things that come up. It's gonna hurt. It might not always be great. There's gonna be、oh, some days、no. where you feel like you're on top of the world, and then there's gonna be、mm-hmm. other days where you feel terrible. But that's just the journey, and it's so worth it though to get like to the end, the end result of you like healing and being happy、yes. again and being able to live your best life. So I would just say. Follow those passions, follow those dreams, and really work on your healing and 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 not settling for less like you did in the past, you know. And realizing that again, you're God's baby. He created、mm-hmm. all of us to be great, not to be mediocre.、Man. He did not create us to be mediocre. So just no, remember, I'm God's baby, and I am not、mm-hmm. meant to be, be be mediocre. And figure out what it is that you want to do with your life, or how you could even make other people's lives better too, you know. Oh my word, yes.、Um, How would you say trauma? If you think about trauma, how does that complicate the healing journey for a woman if they've experienced that? I want to. I would say the trauma, like all those limiting beliefs that come along with it, when you go through something and then you start to think that you're not good enough or that you're not worthy of anything better, and I think that's what really like holds us back. It's that、mm-hmm. mindset. Our mind is our strongest muscle. We can have all the muscles all、yes. over. But our mind is so powerful, and it can make us or break us, you know.、Mm-hmm. And and just when we believe those things that、uh, you know you're not pretty enough, you're not skinny enough, you're not you know smart enough. I used to have the thing with the, I wasn't smart enough. I used、mm-hmm. to not think that I was smart enough to do. But look at I put myself through college, and I started businesses. Clearly, I'm pretty smart if I could do that, you know. Like, but there was a long time where I thought I wasn't smart because I had grown up being told, being compared to my sister who. My twin sister always had A's, you know. Always an、mm-hmm. honor roll student. I always struggled with school, so I always had these limiting beliefs that I wasn't smart enough. And、wow. so, I, for a long time, I walked around thinking, "Wow,、well, this is what it's going to be. I'm not that smart,、right. so you know, I can't go to college. I'm not that smart, and you know, just all these things.、So、I do think it's our beliefs that aren't true. A lot of them are not、right. true, and a lot, a lot of it is fear too. Fear、mm-hmm. from, from whatever. Yeah. And I love the saying that says, "Fear, fear." Only exists in the mind. It doesn't exist anywhere else in the world except our minds,、mm-hmm. <laughs> because at some point, whether we put it there, or other people have put it there. But just again, remembering that fear is not from God; fear is from、so、the devil.、True. 
Yeah. And always just remembering, why am I feeling like this? Is this from mm -hmm. God or is this from somewhere else? And then when you know it's from the devil, you know, he's a liar and you can yes. be like, okay, that's all lies. Like, yes. you know, and just, I think that those are the more important things. It's just the, the mindset. Like we're, once we go through trauma, we really think like we don't deserve better and this is it. Like, mm -hmm. it's going to just be this and it's stuck. I'm going to be sad forever. And it's not true. You know, right. Um, I always say too, heal, healing is a choice. You, have it to, is, isn't it? you either choose to be miserable and live that life or you choose to, you know, move forward in your healing and, and, and go for it. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it is. Yeah, that is so I, true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything in life is a choice. It sure. is. That's exactly what I was about to say. And even not making a choice is making a choice. a choice. Absolutely. <laughs> You're totally right about that. Yeah. Not moving forward or not taking action is also a choice. A choice it's a choice either way it goes so we're gonna be choosing to be here or there if we get to decide right yeah oh, my word okay so i got a few more questions before we get to some of the fun stuff that the <laughs> listeners and viewers will want to know how would you define resilience and then the second word would be flourishing so resilience to me is being able to get back up no matter what has happened you know no matter you've been sexually abused as a kid and got went through financial abuse you get back up and you try again mm -hmm. you know, people tell you you're not good enough you get back up and yeah. you try again that's what i think resilience is you know i've been told so many times believe it or not i actually got um denied or for positions to help uh kids who have been through sexual abuse and my previous mm. job they told me you weren't good enough, but guess what? I got up and I tried again. And then I created a nonprofit that helped women, you know, through That's right. things like that. So, you know, just no matter who tells you you're not good enough, pretty enough, whatever, it's a lie. And just keep going, keep trying again. You know, like I always like the story of Michael Jordan. Everybody knows who he is. How many times did they tell him you aren't going to be a basketball player? He didn't even make the basketball team at one point. And he ended right. up being one of the greatest of all time. So like you know, wow. not believing what the devil or other people tell you, and you can be whatever it is that you want to be, no matter who denies you or says no or whatever. You know, I, I know when we hear no, a lot of people don't like to be rejected, but it's like, um, what is the saying? It's um, you're not, it's not rejection, it's protection. God is protecting yes. you, you know? Yes, so, so that's what I think resilience yes. is. And then flourishing, I think it's just like, flourishing into like maybe something like almost like a butterfly you start out as like a little caterpillar and then you just mm -hmm. flourishing into this big beautiful thing you know that maybe mm -hmm. the caterpillar didn't even know that they can be that one day you know what i mean mm -hmm. but but it, it's in you it's just like up to you again a choice to flourish into into something beautiful or into whatever it is that you want to be i truly believe that if somebody wants to be an actress or a singer or whatever a our author a business owner yes. whatever you can do it it's just again believing in yourself and believing that you know you're worthy and that god's going to help you get there you know and and just going for it and doing it mm -hmm. scary, like i said before just oh my it. word tell me about it um and one last definition how would you define an empowered new chapter of life so definitely a new empowered chapter of life is just, I think I consider that kind of like healing from those old thoughts, old limiting beliefs, old things that maybe we were raised believing. Maybe our parents told us we weren't smart enough, or maybe they mm -hmm. told us whatever, like me, you weren't skinny enough. You need to lose weight. You know, so I had a lot of self-esteem issues, you know, and um, just really being able to overcome those things that aren't true and then moving forward and being better. Mm -hmm. And then also hopefully empowering other people, you know, through the same thing. Yes. A lot of people, I used to be almost 200 pounds at one point. People used mm -hmm. to ask me, how did, how'd you lose all that weight? And they don't like my answer because they, th they think that I took a magic pill that just made me skinny. And it was like, no, I actually hard old fashioned diet and exercise. It's a 80% of what you um, mm -hmm. consume and 20% of exercise. And People don't like to hear that because people always want an easy way out. But sometimes the things that you want in life are going to take a lot of effort and work and mm -hmm. the easy things aren't always the best ways to go. Sometimes you have to go through the hard stuff to get to that place where you can empower other people and share your testimony mm -hmm. or just be empowered to, to whatever, to do anything that it is that you maybe at one point never thought you could do. Yeah, that is so true. But I, I was snickering because like you said, when you said people want the easy way out and that is true whether it's dieting you know you want to be loose you want if, if it's 
a hundred pounds, you want them off in 30 days. Yeah. <laughs> we have 40 and 50 years of problems. We want them all to resol be resolved with the therapist in two years. Yep. You know, forget yep. about it. They say, well, it might be 10 years for you working through this. You got a lot of stuff. 10 years, I want to be healed in two. We yep. want a magic pill for everything, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. We're the, we're the, now the, we're not the generation, you and me, but like, it's almost like everybody now is turning into like instant gratification, instant right. gratification. That's all we want. We want it to be fast. We don't want to mm -hmm. go through the pain. We don't. And that's another thing. I actually saw a documentary the other day on pain pills and like, mm -hmm. it was actually like the opioid pandemic and like how people just are intolerable to pain as opposed to back in the day when there was no pills, people had to sure to wasn't. really deal with it and now everybody just wants a magic pill to take away your pain they, they can't even be in pain for like two hours or they lose it you know and mm -hmm. that, that's so true like we we don't like to be in pain I mean nobody does don't get me wrong but you know sometimes we have to go through the pain to learn a lesson or to to, you mm -hmm. know, to know that okay we're in pain maybe it's time to go to the doctor and check something out or you know just things like that but yeah people don't want to be uncomfortable but the uncomfortable things is also, also what helps us grow mm -hmm. and learn yeah. And I always like to tell the ladies, we want to go from point A to point C mm -hmm. without, we want to skip over B, but when we take the shortcut to C, we take ourselves back to point A anyway. It's yeah. like you from your house to go to the store and there's a certain route you have to take, but we don't like that route. So we go around, but we take the route that's yeah, keeping thing longer. <laughs> what I'm saying? Uh -huh. We can go back to A, well, we, the B is the process, you know? As I yeah. always like to say, yeah. But yeah. you know, it's the same thing with healing. We just, we keep going back to A, like, well, what's going on? Because <laughs> you escaping the process of B, you, you're going to work it around the pain instead of through it, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, my word. So I got some fun questions for you to answer. <laughs> All right. What are some of the songs that's on your playlist now? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> So I actually believe <laughs> you guys would be really surprised that like I listen to Christian music, but I also love rap and hip hop. I am a rap ah, and hip hop kind yes. of gal. So like mm -hmm. you can find me listening to like Wiz Khalifa or, and I also like Spanish music a lot. So like reggaeton. Um, so I have, it's very mixed. So I have like ah, okay. rap and then I have, you know, um, I'm trying to think because there's a lot of new rappers that I honestly don't mm -hmm. know their names. I just listen to the music because it comes on the radio and I'm like, oh, this is interesting. Okay. <laughs> and my daughter listens to rap and hip hop too. But yeah, definitely you'll find reggaeton, rap, hip hop. And Biggie is one of my like all time favorite rappers, believe it or mm. not. And yeah, and I, and but then too, I've been more listening to Christian music lately, mm -hmm. actually too. So and that and it's like Spanish Christian music too. So mm -hmm. <laughs> it's okay. very random. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Sometimes I feel guilty for listening to rap, and I'm like, this is really bad. I shouldn't be listening to this. <laughs> I love my R and B. I love my Dusties, like the old mm -hmm. Motowns and all of them. And uh, black folks refer to them as the Dusties. I love that type of music. Yeah, I love the, and I love my Christian music too. But like I said, I love my R&B, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I love it, yes. What is your favorite kitchen gadget? Uh, my favorite kitchen gadget. Good question. Microwave? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm really bad at I am not gonna lie, I don't really cook a lot. I have I'm Classy super blessed that food, my right? my boyfriend loves to cook, so he does ah, the majority of the cooking here. I am okay. a very spoiled girl. I'm very spoiled. So yes, yeah, so the microwave oh, you're is my spoiled. friend. <laughs> I am. See, and that's what I'm saying. You gotta take the time to love yourself because then you're gonna find somebody that's gonna be beyond your expectations. That is it. so true. Yeah, it is so yeah. true. So name five books that you feel you just can't live without. Oh my goodness. So I'm actually reading one right now. I don't want to get the name wrong. So let me look it up really quick. You are a badass um, by Jen Sincero. Hmm. It's how to stop doubting your greatness and living an awesome life. That uh -huh. is an awesome book. I also hmm. love Joyce. You know who Joyce Meyer is? Yes. Um, I just read Healing the Soul of a Woman. So good. It is I so good. Here. Oh my word. Uh, I got that here. Isn't it awesome? I, Love that book. Yes, it was so beautiful. And then Boundaries by Henry Cloud and John Townsend on yeah. boundaries, which is definitely in a really important part of healing is having boundaries with other people. Um, I love that book too. It's really, really good. And believe it Me or not, too. Rich Dad, Poor Dad was a book that changed my life. It's I've heard of it. I've not read it. Okay, really, so Rich really Dad, good. Poor Dad. Okay. Yes. 
that's one of my faves and um and there's another one too i can't remember mm. what it's called uh but anyway those are i would so i gave you the top four because i can't think of the other one <laughs> there's another one too it was so good but i can't remember mm. even the author's name but it was like a women's empowerment type of book, like an but, empowering yeah. type book okay yeah. wow huh what are three things you do to nourish your soul Pray for one, pray a lot. Mm. Um, and I definitely do a lot of self-care because of the work that I do. I take in a lot of really heavy, you know, people's stories and things like that. So yeah. I do my own, I talk to a counselor every single week, like clap work. And I yeah. love it because it helps me release whatever I'm, I'm kind of going through. Um, and a lot of people think you have to have problems to go see a counselor and that's not true. You can just go talk to them about whatever, you know? Right. Sometimes things will come up and you're talking to them and sometimes nothing even has to be wrong. You know, it's just talking to somebody and venting. Um, and so praying um, and that and counseling, those are the two big ones for me and also doing like my self care. So just making sure mm -hmm. I'm going to get a massage every now and then, or, you know, going right. to get my nails done, uh, just things that kind of make me happy. And that's what really kind of keeps me feeling good about myself. You know, like I do deserve mm -hmm. to, go get a mani-pedi or go get a facial or go get a massage or whatever, you know? Oh but yeah, I know exactly what you mean, like you said. And it took me a while, I would say like within this last year especially, I have made a point of celebrating myself. Mm -hmm. And you know when you get to a certain point of healing, I know you probably can attest to it where you're like, I'm gonna celebrate myself. Well, you know, even if I'm doing it by myself, this was an exactly. Take you know yourself on a date, take yourself out for dinner, take yourself to the movies, buy yourself yes. flowers. You don't need a man oh, to do that for you. Yeah. I agree. Yes. I uh, <laughs> I did my own book launch party by myself and took <laughs> pictures and sent it to my son. He says, Oh, you basically took yourself out <laughs> on a date. He said, I wish I was there to get some of those wings. I said, They were good. <laughs> uh... That's good. That's good. And that's, I think, what a lot of women think like, oh, I feel like a loser doing it. No, you're amazing because there's mm -hmm. how many people wouldn't do that, that don't have the guts to, they don't want to be. At one point, I was scared to go to lunch alone. Like when I used right. to work for corporate, I'd be like, oh my God, I feel like such a loser going by myself. But who cares? Nobody's even right. looking at you. Mm -hmm. Yep, you work <laughs> Nobody's hard. worried about you. Okay. Yeah. Treat yourself. Amen. Describe yeah. your perfect day. My perfect day? Yeah, your perfect day. Hmm. That's a good question. Oh my God. I think my perfect day would just be like no kids being home <laughs> mm -hmm. and being able to do whatever I want in a house by myself, like peace and quiet, eat when I want. Mm -hmm. I don't know, go outside. You know, I would say it's a perfect day to be go outside in my yard and just go like lay there and tan mm -hmm. and just not do anything. I have to worry about work or, you know, anything like that. And just like, relax I, I'm a person too when I go on vacation I'm, I'm what some people might think is boring because I like to just go on the beach and just tan all day and mm -hmm. my daughter's like that's so boring and I was like but I find it relaxing that's I love you know because I don't I'm always on the go I'm a business owner I have like two mm -hmm. businesses that, so to just sit there and be like present and just lay there and do nothing like lay in the sun is uh, amazing to me <laughs> and if other right. people think it's not a big deal but to me it is because I don't get that time to just sit there and do nothing a lot of the time. So that is like perfect day is just laying in the sun and doing nothing all day and maybe having a drink or two. Mm -hmm. And relaxing, <laughs> right? And relaxing and just oh, being wow. in the moment, not being on my mm -hmm. phone, not being on my computer for once. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my word, yes. What is something that you want people to know about you? Yeah, so something I want people to know about me, just that I'm really, I think I'm a really genuine person and I genuinely do care about people. And that's also why I have the nonprofit too. That way, if people can yes. afford like coaching at the very least, I can get you started on your healing journey, whether hopefully you're in Illinois, so you can get the free counseling, but we are going to expand that one day. But if not, at least you have the support group to come to and free resources on our website, you know, cause I don't think money should ever be the reason why we can't move forward. You know, if a lot of people tell me, oh, I can't afford counseling, so I can't see a therapist, or mm -hmm. I don't have my insurance doesn't cover this, you know, so I don't think that should ever be the reason why. So that's why I created the nonprofit, because I don't want money to ever be the reason why women just can't move forward to be their best selves. And, mm -hmm. you know, I really think 
it's, I'm really, it really means a lot to me to help people move forward in any way. Yes. Even if it's just one conversation that I have with someone and if I can impact them in some way, in a good way, obviously, then that means like so much to me. And I just genuinely have a heart to serve other people and to just, yes. you know, I really do. It comes from a genuine place. And I, I know that maybe people that don't know me don't always know that, but once they get on the phone with me or have a conversation with me, they, they know right away. Like, yeah, this they person know. They could just feel it, the vibes, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's probably what it is. Those, yeah, you say it, it, you know, you feel the vibes and the energy of somebody's intent. You know what I mean? Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. What is one thing you think people get wrong about you? Um, so I have a little bit RBF, you know what that means, resting biatch face. So I think a lot of people, mm. especially in person, they think I'm stuck up. A lot of people have told oh. me, oh, and I... When I met you, I thought you were this, or I thought you were that, or I thought you were bougie, or I thought, mm -hmm. whatever. A lot of people just, you know, because a, a lot of times we judge people off of their appearance, you know, I right. dress nice, I take care right. of myself. So a lot of people just think I'm this really, I'm very, very down to earth, as you know, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. you can talk to me about anything and I, I'm just a very down to earth person. So people always mm -hmm. think that I'm like mean or you know, stuck up when they meet me. And then like later they're like, oh my God, you're so down to earth. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, I know. So I shouldn't judge a book by its cover because you never know. <laughs> Isn't that true? That is so true. Like you say, you look and then you might think one way, you know, and it's something how our minds go. We see someone as being very put together, but all of a sudden we've come up with conclusions about that based upon the outside. You yeah, know? definitely. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. This has been a wonderful interview and it's going to help. Oh my goodness. A lots of, lots and lots of ladies, lots of women. Uh, we're going to be blessed by this. And I just want to thank you for um, taking the time out to do it because I know you have a, a very busy schedule as well. Yeah, and no, uh, yeah, you, you are very, very welcome. Yes, very, <laughs> very welcome, as I said. And we will definitely <laughs> keep in touch because we got a lot of yeah, stuff absolutely. in common. We yeah. have never was the same. After he had died The love that refined So